Hello, everyone. My name is uh, John McKay. I'm the Member of Parliament for Scarborough Guildwood, and I'm joined by my friends and colleagues, uh, Mitzi Hunter, a Member of Parliament, um, the uh, provincial of uh, uh, the provincial Parliament uh, for Scarborough Guildwood, and Paul Ainsley, the Councillor for the area. We've been doing these uh, virtual town halls for the last, I guess, what two months now, and. Yeah. Um, it's actually proved to be uh, quite an interesting opportunity for us to communicate with our constituents. Uh, last um, uh, last town hall we did, we had um, Mitzi, or we had Mitzi, yeah, we had Mitzi all the time. Uh, we had um, Liz Buller from the Scarborough Health Network, and uh, she talked about um, the preparedness of the Scarborough Health Network for um, any further outbreaks of COVID. So tonight, we thought we'd bring in some really intellectual heavyweights. Um, we've got Andrea Hazel and uh, Mike Williams, who are uh, joining us to talk about the economic climb out from um, our healthcare crisis. And um, they're going to focus on Scarborough and uh, the things that need to be done. But before I introduce Mike and Andrea, I'm going to ask uh, Mitzi and Paul to uh, say a word or two about um, whatever it is they're going to say a word or two about. Well, hello, everyone. Steve, go ahead. It's, um, it's really great to be back again for our virtual town hall with uh, John McKay and Paul Ainsley. And really, this is an opportunity for us to update you on what is happening with the pandemic in Scarborough and the uh, economic recovery that is ahead. As you know, most of the province has moved into stage three of the recovery and we are waiting on Toronto and Scarborough to move into stage three. And, uh, and this is something that is important for our economic recovery. So I'm really looking forward to our guests, uh, Andrea and Mike, on their take on what we need to do to make sure that we have a strong Scarborough recovery. So thank you so much for joining us. Over to you, Paul. Thank you. Thanks, Mitzi. Thank you, John. Uh, it's great to be here as always. I think our, our uh, town halls really speak to the dedication that all three of us have to our community here in Scarborough Guildwood. I think we're gonna have a great discussion this evening. I'm looking forward to the questions from our residents as we talk about our economic recovery. I know that Andrea is the president of the Scarborough Business Association, has been leading a cyber breakfast every Wednesday morning that have been very well received with a wide range of uh, people on different topics. There's one this Wednesday morning with Minister Rod Phillips that's gonna be talking about the provincial perspective at, at the city. I wanna thank Michael Williams, our uh, general manager of economic development for being with us this evening as uh, he talks about the programs and initiatives that we have at the municipal level. Uh, also with the support of the provincial and federal government as we work at getting our economy back on our feet, on its feet and supporting our businesses. So I wanna thank everybody for listening this evening. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Mitzi. And um, I have to say that when we talked uh, earlier about um, who we should have uh, to talk about the economic recoveries in Toronto and Scarborough, um, both your names just jumped off the page as far as Mitzi and Paul were concerned. So I, am, I too am looking forward to the conversation. I'm going to introduce Andrea, then I'm going to introduce Mike, and then I'm going to uh, lead on with a question to uh, Andrea. So Andrea apparently has been in the um, financial sector for three decades. Uh, I'm starting to think that maybe you started when you were 14 years old. My goodness. Um, and she's chair of the um, Caribbean Philanthro Philanthropic Council, has been for five years. And then in a, um, an exquisite po point of timing, became the president of the Scarborough Business Council on November 2019. Watch what you're thinking about, my goodness. Um, so this has been a, a huge challenge for her. Um, I'm gonna get her to talk about the Scarborough Business Council and take note, however, that she has started, because she has nothing better to do, uh, she started a new company called Windspire uh, General um, uh, Financial Solutions. 
So uh, we are very fortunate to have you here, Andrea, and we're looking forward to what you have to say. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Mike, uh, Mike uh, is uh, is with the city. He is with the Toronto Economic Development Strategy Collaboration for Competition and its cultural plan, Creative Capital Gain. I'd like to see Mike's business card. Like, how do you get all that on your business card, Mike? My goodness gracious me. Eminently qualified, has been with the city for quite a number of years. Um, as an MA in urban geography and as a certified management consultant. And um, both of our guests tonight uh, have serious uh, experience in, um, in financial matters and in economic matters. And I'm going to start um, with Andrea. Andrea, I'm interested in knowing what the Scarborough Business Association's mandate is and, and what kind of support it can give to uh, both established businesses and nascent businesses and and in this environment what are its challenges and large and and if you could expand into the challenges that uniquely uh, you see for Scarborough businesses. And so thank you John, uh, thank you for having me and so the mandate of SB actually we started in 2015 and so we had three mandates to advocate um, on behalf of Scarborough, just be that voice of Scarborough um, where, where there's policy changes, uh, topics that is relevant to the business is going to support um, the business expansion growth. Um, we have uh, opportunities for, for education, um, we help with the prosperity and we have a wide range of uh, networking activities. And so that is all um, in plan before um, the pandemic started. And so we had a really um, um, uh, very successful after five event whereby we invited a lot of our business members uh, in Scarborough and we will have a restaurant that we support um, every third week of the month. And so we would have um, almost like uh, 50 to 60 uh, business members coming out at that after five networking event. And so that, that took off really well. We also had our education sessions, which we had every other month. And um, just like we have with our cyber breakfast webinars, now we have to take it um, in the cyber world. And so we also were faced with, uh, with, with challenges as an, as an organization. We are a non-for-profit organization. So all of our um, events that uh, generate revenue for us, uh, we couldn't do those um, in 2020. And so every organization, I think in Scarborough, whether it's a business, an association, um, an organization, we are all impacted in every way. And so, you know, we've started um, a task force. It's called COVID-19 task force. Because as I said, we at the SBA, we are very brilliant people. We were <laughs> challenged with... <laughs> We well, were challenged. You know, and also apparently very modest people as well. Hey, who knew? Yes. <laughs> yes. We, we, were, we were very challenged with how we're going to stay relevant um, in a pandemic. And um, we were worried that in this pandemic, how are we going to be supporting and carrying out our mandate to our Scarborough businesses? knowing mm -hmm. that everything is going to be 95% online. And so that's why we came up with our cyber breakfast. We took off from mid-March. We haven't stopped. And we are in our 18th cyber breakfast webinar, right? Well, we right. had all, well, all different levels of government um, um, uh, on the, the, the forefront. Second, we have dedicated our uh, website as a resource because all information was coming down fast and furious during the pipeline. And what we were hearing from our businesses is, whoa, there's a lot of information out there. We don't even know where to go to get this information. So we have dedicated our website. We have about um, 19 to 20 links of different information that came from different levels of government, how you access different funding. Um, the, the gaps that we were hearing from our businesses um, uh, around March, April, and May was the rent situation with their landlord. Um, they needed help. And, you know, the landlord was not um, 
I, I guess, understanding the funding um, situation. And so what we were doing is connecting these businesses to our, our counselors, our MPPs and, and MPs in the area um, to have that kind of um, resolution um, happening. We did not leave any businesses um, on, on attention. Um, we we it, take our job biggest, very seriously. Yeah. What was your biggest surprise in in uh, dealing with? Like, uh, you obviously were in March in everybody's in up to their neck on this. And before I turn it over to Mike, um, I just want to uh, get a feeling from you what, uh, what you were thinking in March and now you're in July. What was your biggest surprise as far as supporting businesses in Scarborough? So my biggest surprise of supporting businesses in Scarborough from March, um, our businesses were just collecting information and everybody was just shocked at the economy shutting down. And right. so everybody was spinning wheels and getting the right information and knowing who to go to. And so that's what we resolved first. Now is we are teaming up and I'm gonna, I'm hoping I'm not letting this out of the hat too fast. Uh, we are now um, uh, moving forward into phase three. And even though we're not in phase three, we are rolling our sleeves up and we have uh, joined uh, um, uh, Councillor Jennifer McKelvey, UTSC The Bridge, Centennial College. We're supporting the restaurants, they are hardest hit. So even though we have, even though we have, um, um, uh, I think it's Toronto Caf Cafe TO that is now giving two thousand five hundred dollars to support the, the the business technology reputation reputational management um, for the restaurants and the website. They do not know the how. They don't. They don't even know how to start. And so that's where we are going to get in the grounds. Um, Scarborough Bridge has done wonderful surveys with these restaurants and found out that education is a key part. Well, let's go, let's go over to Mike, who's probably got something to say about Toronto moving from stage two to stage three. So you heard what Andrea had to say. She's obviously representing the business side of the community. They want to get back to business, uh, generating revenue, generating activity. And I'm imagining, Mike, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, you might have something to say about what's what are the criteria to, for Toronto to move out of its present uh, stage into into a more uh, robust economic environment. It would be better if you took yourself off mute, Mike. Yeah. It would be a lot better if I was on. Well, you, you'll judge. You might would prefer that I stayed on mute. <laughs> Um, My kids like me on mute. I, I know that. <laughs> so I think the most important thing, first of all, is to realize that we're in a very serious health crisis and that the first thing that comes that we have to ensure is safe, safety and health. So everything that we do has to be with an eye on making sure that we beat COVID and we don't spread it around. So the longer it's in the community, the longer it's a big threat, the longer the business challenges will be so that the best solution from a business perspective is for us to beat COVID and and it's not going to go away entirely until we have a treatment and until we have a, a vaccine but certainly in the meantime let's not give it a chance to come roaring back like it has in many places where they thought they'd beat it. Um, I was talking to my uh, uh, um, person in the same position I am in Melbourne, Australia, they they had no COVID 10, 10 weeks ago. And now they're having twice as many cases uh, a day as we are in Ontario and Toronto. Um, but in terms of the businesses and what we can do to help support them, I think the first thing we need to do is, is build from the very, very local community. Get each community comfortable with going outside. Get each community comfortable with going to their main streets and their shopping centers and their uh, parks safely with masks. And um, so get comfortable because the surveys that we I've seen would indicate that there's still many people out there, maybe even half the population is all is a little reluctant. You know, they got used to being safe in their own home and now to, 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 to go out. So we're going to be announcing some programs over the next month to encourage community interaction. 
Uh, we are very strong supporters of what Andrew is just talking about, the, the uh, f f find or find the um, restaurant program in Scarborough in partnership with all the people that Andrew has said. Um, we also have other programs like Digital Main Street to encourage small businesses to become competent on the web. Um, and that's being strongly supported by both the federal and provincial governments. Also, uh, Shop Here, which is helping retailers create a presence uh, on the web. Again, strongly supported by both governments as well as the City of Toronto. Um, Cafe Teal, which Andrea mentioned, is a program to help restaurants uh, get more patio space if they need it. That is not as much of a challenge in parts of Scarborough as it is in other parts of the city um, where there's more private and parking lot adjacent to restaurants in Scarborough. Um, but I agree with Andrew that people need to know how to navigate all the different programs. And on our website, we also as, as SBA have uh, a number of tools. Uh, so we have listings, um, we have webinars that feature how businesses can cope with uh, uh, COVID both local, you know, in their store uh, or as I talked about going online. We have uh, chat bots which allow you to ask a question of a computer. The yeah. computer gives you a, an answer if it can and about 80% of the time it can get, get the right answer to you. And then we have a voice call in service called Advice, Advice TO which would put you in touch with a business advisor that most of the work they've been doing so far, John, is to help navigate provincial programs, federal programs, and city programs. So that uh, I think the more that small business especially can learn how to leverage all of these tools out there, uh, the better off we're going to be. Uh, the city is there for you. You have very uh, active councillors in Scarborough, which is great to see. Uh, Councillor Ainsley made sure that our uh, um, uh, cafe TO support programs were available for restaurants that were not in business improvement areas, which are uh, mostly outside of Scarborough, so that individual restaurants can get the support. This is getting to be way too much of a love-in between the uh, the city and and the, the business, um, and then Councillor Ainsley. I, I have to say that uh, Councillor Ainsley has primed you very well, Mike. Um, so, Andrea, you to answer on the yeah. Andrea, I, well, let me just uh, before I catch you, Paul. Um, Andrea, where is the point of friction? If there is a point of friction. Uh, between the 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 city and what what could be done better? Because I agree with Mike that you know there's a lot of programs out there, and and all levels of government by and large have worked well together. Um, hence our you know our regular uh, podcasts here with uh, Mitzi and Paul. Um, so wh what could we be doing better? Uh, I'd be interested in both Mike's answer and, and Andrew's answer, and then I'll turn it over to Mitzi and Paul to to um, see what they've got to say uh, on, on the comments that you've already made. So, Mike or Andrea? Yeah, so I, I, I can go on that from my uh, perspective, John. Uh, thank you for that question, and that, that, that's a really good question. Um, hearing from uh, the business on the grounds, there are great programs out there from all the uh, different levels of government. Amazing program to help the businesses move forward um, uh, and in and, and a, recovery, a recovery stage. What is not there is within all these great programs, there is not a lot of us saying and, and reaching out to these businesses and saying, this is how you need to apply for this program. Let me break mm -hmm. it down for you. The businesses does not have a lot of resources to look into and drill down into these program and the know-how and the application. And some of the applications um, from the business perspective, from what I've heard, I haven't gone in through to all the applications, so I, I, I cannot validate this, uh, but it's someone somehow cumbersome. And so mm -hmm. maybe maybe if we can have that, I don't know if in the, uh, I, I was told that the chat box 
if there can be a communication on how to fill out each application as a guide. And so I know we have talked about housing all the important um, grants and funding from all the, different, all the, the different levels of government just on one site. Here is where you need to go for CBA. Here is how you fill out the CBA application and, and so forth. And so I think we need to, now we're going into phase three. I think we need to re revisit the programs and streamline it. So that- Yeah, Mike, our Mike I miss. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, sorry, I just wanted to uh, so, see what so the Mike agreed not, with them. Yeah, so not just, you know, to the downtown main street, but think about the the, the urban, the, the, the Scarborough uh, community. How can we, benefit more from that because all our yeah. communities are coming from a different um, place of um, uh, doing business. What, Mike, what's your reaction to that? Well, I mean, I agree that more people should, uh, we can always do a much better job than we're doing in getting people to understand how they can apply to programs. And we have services to do that. And uh, I'll make sure that we do a better job of reaching people in Scarborough. We have an office in the, uh, well, they used to be at Scarborough Civic Center. They're at home right now, uh, but they're very focused on Scar Scarborough businesses. Uh, Neil Farmer and Ian Brown um, are, are uh, uh, huge uh, supporters and have worked with SBA and others uh, there. The other aspect, John, to answer your question, is uh, most businesses need financial assistance. And so Anything that the feds and the province can do to help small business. Uh, we at the city, as you know, uh, we're having our own financial challenges and we don't have the ability to borrow to solve operating challenges. So our financial uh, support is very, very limited to small grants around uh, the digital main street and that money actually comes from the province and the feds. So, um any any opportunity to support small business with uh financial backing is i think the most important uh element to most small businesses that i speak to uh, and then how do you clear and how do i fill out serva how do i fill out secra how do i fill out all the different support programs that are out there okay. so uh, there's more to yeah, be done that? and we need to do yeah. a better job today Thank you, for, thank you both for that. Let, let me turn it over to Mitzi and Paul as to whether they've got any commentary or questions on both what Andrea and Mike have said. Mitzi? Yeah, well, I, I really like the fire that I hear from Andrea for um, programs that are available provincially and citywide to have a, a unique consideration in terms of how it applies and how businesses in the Scarborough context can benefit from it. I, I think it's extraordinarily important because um, the types of businesses that we have here and the um, uh, the needs are, are are unique to the the Scarborough context and the Scarborough experience. So I I love the advocacy, Andrea, and I I, I, I support you. And let's do what we can to be as loud as possible to the federal, provincial, and municipal governments on behalf of the Scarborough business community. So I'm thrilled about that. I do want to share um, just some information on um, where businesses can find um, one-stop information eventually, because I recognize that there are um, differences in, in what is available and who qualifies. And, um, and in some instances, there are businesses who are not able, even though we are on the cusp of stage, stage three, there will be businesses that will not be able to move into stage three. And, and some of them have been contacting my office to find out why. So, um, you know, anything where the, the mouth and, and the face contact is too close will not be able to uh, move into um, into stage three, for instance. So, so the 800 number is 1-888-444-3659. And, um, and I would encourage uh, companies that want to understand what the provincial guidelines are for opening to be able to contact that number. Because one of the things that Mike said that is 
very important. And we are seeing this, it's not just unique to Scarborough or Toronto, and that is the confidence. It's actually not even unique to Ontario or Canada. Um, it is a phenomenon that is happening uh, in many places around the world, and that is the confidence of customers and the public to come back and to use services um, the way that they were prior to COVID. That confidence has not come back yet. And in order for us to have a, an economic recovery that is lasting, we need to be able to boost that confidence. And one of the ways in which to boost confidence is for businesses to demonstrate that they are following public health guidelines, that the first priority is to keep themselves and their staff safe. Those employees are the ones that are going to be you know, conveying that confidence in your establishment. And then for customers to feel that, you know, people are wearing masks, the hand sanitizers and the PPE is being used effectively. And we're following physical distancing and those types of recommendations that are essential. As Mike has said, the virus is still here and it's still a risk in places like Scarborough, I checked the Toronto Public Health uh, interactive map to see where we are. Scarborough is still very much a COVID hotspot, if you would, and compared to the rest of, uh, of the city and province. And so we still have to be vigilant about contact um, and how that happens to make sure that we contain the spread of the virus. But I'm also very confident in the creativity, in the hard work, and in the resilience of our business community here in Scarborough and of course our, our our residents in Scarborough who support our local businesses here and uh, and I know that we will come out of this together um, but we still have to work together we still have to have that Scarborough pride and that sense of community. Paul have you got um, any commentary on whether what Mike uh, or Andrew or for that matter Mitzi has said? Well, I think in terms of technology, just to kind of supplement what Mike was talking about and also to address what uh, Andrea outlined, at the municipal level of the City of Toronto, one of the things that we've really learned from the COVID and is that people, you know, really need technology and to use technology better, especially in the, in the business community. We started a, a program called Digital Main Street in 2016 with the Toronto Association of Business Improvement Areas, or TAVIA, uh, to assist businesses in their development, in uh, working online, in, in improving their business platform. Uh, just in the past few months, uh, we've had a multi-departmental program where we're looking at um, businesses applying for their licenses or renewing their licenses, any type of communication, with the city of Toronto that you used to do, have to go and line up or, you know, go down to Metro Hall and stand in line for a couple hours to, to pay a fee. We're doing that all online. We're rolling that out. We, uh, we've come to realize that people, much like in their private life, life where they wanna click and order, buy groceries, um, order food in, uh, have things sent to their house that we need to support our business community in the same way. Uh, to address one of Andrea's concerns, um, for uh, the past couple of years now, I've been really trying to push at the City of Toronto because um, our business improvement areas are, by and large, we only have two of them in Scarborough. There's none whatsoever in southeastern uh, Scarborough. We um, have many different partnerships with our BIAs uh, financially that you don't get with a business association. And I think when you look at the, the makeup of businesses in Scarborough, uh, many of them are family owned small businesses that really can't get involved the way our BIAs are structured now. Um, but they need more support than you're gonna get from, from your local uh, business association if that's what uh, they decide to do. And I think we need to, at the municipal level to find stronger ways to support our business uh, businesses in Scarborough financially when it comes to that partnership. And I think that also includes reaching out to the, to the federal and provincial government as well. In particular, when you look at COVID and the, the huge detrimental impact it's had to, on our business community here in Scarborough. Thanks, John. So, okay. Um, 
so with that, maybe we could just go to a more general uh, questions. And let me ask one, particularly of Andrea, and that and that the the issue that I've heard about um, is that the can that the government of Canada gives um, a two thousand dollar emergency benefit, and um, and uh, you know it's a it's significant sum of money for some people, and uh, for some employers. Uh, it in fact it creates a competitive disadvantage. Um, their their employees are in the, if you will, fifteen to twenty dollar range. Um, uh, people look at it and say, "Well, I can stay home and earn and have two thousand dollars, or I can work forty hours and you know have less money." Um, so, are you hearing that? And is it? Um, the kind of thing that the government of Canada in particular uh, should adjust. And I'd be interested in Mike's comments after Andrea's uh, comments uh, on that on that issue. And so, um, yes, we, we did hear a couple of that, not from a lot of businesses um, to, to no. raise significant uh, concerns. But the businesses that we did hear it from, the issue is out there. OK, whereby the employees chose not to come back. And it could be, John, for um, the, the two thousand dollars they are receiving. But we got to think about they are not ready to come back because there's still a health issue there. And so, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, we got to make sure that we are listening carefully and we're balancing both aspects. And so that is why um, in the month of August, what the SBA are doing is a community outreach. And so if you look at uh, the storefront, that is a huge uh, support of um, uh, getting people back to work in Scarborough. Um, uh, UTSC, the bridge, have uh, a program where they've got their, their, their students ready to go into those businesses and really help them uh, to support an, an opening. And so those are the types of programs that businesses were inquiring about. We had on, on our about two weeks ago uh, breakfast, we had um, the bridge, we had Centennial, we had Imran Ali from Northern Smokes Restaurant. And he gave a compelling story of how the community came together and helped his shop to be reopened. And um, his story actually touched a lot of us. And when he can reach back to SBA and said, thank you for giving me this platform so I can share my success story on how the community has helped me to reopen. I am happy that you share this platform. You give me a platform to share my story. And so, yes, it is there. The reality is there. But whether it is because of health, um, the employees are not OK coming back to work with. Maybe that is something that we have to get together and, and increase the confidence um, with the employees of, of our small mom and pop businesses in Scarborough. Yeah, the, um, the, the employers I've talked to are adhering to all of the protocols that have been published by the province and the, and the city. Um, and yet employees uh, express a certain reluctance and some for good reason and maybe some for not so good reason. Mike, what's your reaction? You're on mute, Mike. <laughs> I've been doing this for 12 weeks, you'd think, you know, or more than that, 16 weeks. You'd think You're that not I alone, learn. Mike. You're not alone. I, I chaired two days of meetings um, in Ottawa on... Uh, actually an interesting subject, uh, systemic racism and, pre and policing, and I could not get the mute and unmute uh, working. I am pathetic. So Mike, you and I are in the well, same we category. Can form, we, can be, we can be the basis of a club here. Um, <laughs> That's right. So right. My, my, my answer is pretty similar to Andrea's. Uh, we hear that, uh, especially people that are used to hiring uh, summer, summer students or you know, that they pay minimum wage and give a work experience. And um, some summer students are deciding that two grand for no work, it's easier than uh, the same amount of money with work. Uh, but I, I but I don't think that's, as Andrea said, I don't think that's uh, a gigantic uh, concern. Um, I think it would be worse if there was no program uh, to support 
uh, people who don't have jobs, you know, so we have way too many unemployed right now in Scarborough and across Toronto. And, and so this kind of money uh, uh, prevents a calamitous situation. So I applaud do, the do you Do you offhand know what the unemployment rate is in Scarborough? Uh, we don't collect, nobody collects that information at Scarborough. I have to believe it is at least as high as, if not, no, it's probably higher than the uh, average in Toronto, which officially is around 14, 15%. But because mm -hmm. a lot of people don't even register as looking for work because it's a hopeless situation, the real rate of uh, unemployment is probably closer to 20% in Scarborough. It's huge. And in, and in some categories of people, very high. Mitzi, you wanted to jump in? I do want to jump in here because I think there's an element um, that we have to speak to. And, you know, yes, it is about, you know, if people are getting an income, um, you know, while there's still a health situation. But part of um, the recovery is that we're not uh, yet recovered. And so there are still parts of our systems that are not fully back in a consistent way. So, for instance, childcare is uh, is not not all the spaces are back or not, you know, people might not be as comfortable yet putting their, their child in, in, into the system. Um, we know that women with uh, school age children are not returning to pre-COVID employment levels at the same rate as men with school age children. This is something that we saw in the last uh, Stats Canada update. And, you know, it's being called a she, a she session because uh, women were um, uh, were relatively more hit by um, the recession and are slower to come back. And and so, you know, the state of our school system and, and whether or not we're going back to five days a week or staying at home with online learning or a combination of a hybrid is still a big question mark <clears throat> and creates some doubt and some uncertainty. And and I do think that these things are weighing on people's minds and, and their decisions in terms of um, you know, whether they're going to jump back in fully in terms of work. The one thing that I, I, I hear, uh, and I've done a couple of roundtables uh, with small businesses and, and with the restaurant community as well, and, and one of the things that they've said is that the wage subsidy program that the federal government put out has been extremely well designed and very, very helpful, and they they would like to see that continue, and I know that you um, have done so as well. So that's that's been something that they've said uh, keep that in place because that liquidity and 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 while things are coming back uh, is really important to them. It is it is a dodgy business as to when the you know a the the government of Canada has fi um, finite resources and we ran a massive deficit and but you know the government of Canada is probably more capable of running a deficit than most households. Um, having said that, it, it and at a very low interest rate, John. Yes, it is actually a low interest rate. Well, that has something to do with the fact that we uh, run a very, very tight ship in Ottawa, I have to say. Uh, Mike, um, your, um, your, your reaction to, um, uh, to the uh, issue of, um, of minimum wage um, and, well, uh, l let me switch questions here because um, one of the things that is always uh, of concern is transit in Scarborough. Always, always, always. Um, mm -hmm. we, we hear that um, endlessly. So now the city has, or, or sort of the province has quote unquote taken over the Scarborough subway. Um, where are we at with the Scarborough East LRT? And do you feel comfortable answering the question? <laughs> 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 means a lot of things, so uh, uh, I, I'm not comfortable from the knowledge perspective uh, that I'm totally up to speed on that. Uh, I know that we just, the council is going to consider tomorrow um, a, a Lawrence busway, and I think uh, the focus uh, continues to be by council on ensuring that Scarborough is well connected to itself and to the rest of the city. So uh, I don't see any uh, wavering on that, but your your local councillor might have a view on that, John. 
Well, I was I was going to go to the local councillor next. He might actually have a view and uh, could give us a bit of an update because uh, uh, money is going to be tight, no question about it. And um, apparently, um, uh, apparently, it's just abundantly available. So, um, so, uh, Paul, not money is not abundantly available at the. One of the biggest things I look at in the economy, and, and Michael will vouch for it as well, is the amount of tax dollars when the the City of Toronto economy is kicking on all cylinders. The amount of money that we send in taxes provincially and, and federally out of the city oh, and, and what we here get we go, back here we <laughs> is, uh, is uh, a huge issue. And yeah. one of those issues is is around public transit. We have a, a three-stop subway that the provincial government uh, has decided to expand from a one-stop subway. Uh, we had money set aside through the province for the Eglinton East LRT. Um, we had some arrangements that were made. Uh, we also need the Ontario line uh, because the uh, Blur Danforth subway in rush hour in particular is so heavily used. Uh, we have the, the, the relief line, as we call it, which the province also expanded that as well. Um, so one of the difficulties we have is that the uh, current provincial government, every time they kick into one of these lines is the Eglinton East LRT goes further and further down the wish list. And it's something that I, I've supported since the beginning. It, uh, if we'd stuck to the original schedule, uh, it would have been built by now. And, you know, in the meantime, we're going to have a bus rapid transit line built in the fall. We have a number of express bus routes in um, along Eglinton, one that I push very hard to build from Victoria Park out to the University of Toronto Scarborough. But still, we have neighborhood improvement areas, and those are the people that need public transit the most. And an LRT would run through uh, five neighborhood improvement areas here in Scarborough, and I would really like to see it built. But the current provincial government. Uh, I don't think you don't hear the premier say here. The premier say LRT very often. So I'm very pessimistic uh, about when we might see one built in Scarborough. Okay, Paul, we're, we're counting on you. I want to just switch topics here. Um, and that uh, I'll direct it first to Mike, but then possibly Mitzi and uh, Andrea want to weigh in. So this is a question from the public. Can someone provide clarity for the $1.2 million of funding from the city to confront anti-black racism for small businesses. So maybe Mike, you could lead off and um, and Mitzi and uh, Andrea might wish to, to weigh in or Paul for that matter. So uh, this is a very important, glad you raised this, John, and, and Mitzi raised it as well. I think the current focus, uh, increased focus on anti-black racism is one of the most important initiatives the city has undertaken. And it's clear that the that COVID has disproportionately impacted um, uh, black people and other people that are uh, not as uh, well placed in our economy as they should be. Uh, so this is an important thing for for city staff and for city council. In terms of the 1.2 million, that is sort of a um, just an initial commitment of existing monies to redirect them to ensure uh, that they are uh, having some kind of impact. From my division's perspective, those monies, uh, part of that 1.2 million comes from our division's budget, uh, and that's going to go towards ensuring that we have strong uh, support for black businesses uh, through uh, we're supporting uh, the Black Business Professional Association in, in Little Jamaica on Eglinton Avenue West to help support those businesses. Uh, we're putting more money into uh, cultural endeavors that are led by black uh, organizations and black led organizations like RISE and others. Um, so our focus is to ensure that a better per percent of our business support money and our culture support money is going specifically to black groups, black businesses and black led Arts organizations. Andrea, what's your thoughts? 
And so, so th uh, uh, thank you for for that question. That's a good question. I mean, that that touches me. That that touches me in in, in a lot of more ways uh, than you think. And this is one of the reasons why I branched out and I started my own financial company because I understand uh, the depth of knowledge um, for my culture that we need to improve on. And and. Uh, uh, financial management in 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 2020, um, education and finance is going to be um, the best success for my culture and my people in 2020 to move us forward. So while we're having a 1.2 million uh, initial funding, um, my question is: It's great to hear about all of this. We would also like to hear what is in between that $1.2 million, even the, the, the black uh, programs that uh, it is being invested to. Do we have a task force in place to test if these programs are working, to test on the sustainability of these programs? It's one thing to uh, flush monies into the system, but if we don't have the, the right system set up for sustainability, I don't see this working in 10, 15 years and to make a difference um, for our generation, generations to come. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, before I ask, um, uh, I, I'm, these are questions coming in from the public, which, uh, which I think are, as Andrea rightly said, are good questions. Um, but I, I, uh, I know Mitzi will probably want to weigh in on this, but so also will Paul. And there's a, uh, let me go to Paul first and then, and then to Mitzi, because there was a follow-up question also from the public. and. <clears throat> Uh, this person is asking for clarity on how to access the the uh, the funding. So uh, Mike did start to edge towards that. Paul, are you able to uh, respond on on that uh, that particular question? Then I'll go to Mitzi, and and I want to also ask Mitzi a question about ODSP. So let's go uh, let's go to Paul first. Yeah. So anybody that wants uh, information on the the financial programming, you can go to our city website, which is toronto.ca or you can also uh, call my constituency office and uh, and we can make sure you have the money or sorry not the money we'll make sure we'll make sure you have the information we'll make sure you have the information i'm coming to you yeah. So you just go around scarborough guild with a basket full of money is that the way yes no no all right uh, no wonder. <laughs> I, I just didn't know that. Uh, do I'm already envisioning. That? I'm already envisioning taking the program from the 1.2 million dollars. Uh, I know we we have uh, excellent systems in place to make sure uh, both an application system and benchmarking the programs uh, that the money goes to because we want to make sure they succeed. In particular, we have 33 neighborhood improvement areas across the city. So even when it was first announced from my perspective, uh, the $1.2 million is kind of like putting your, your toe in the water, testing the waters and trying to figure out what an appropriate amount of level of uh, financial support is and how we can get it out. Okay, well, let's let's go to Mitzi, and I'm sure you'll want to respond on that question, but uh, there's also an additional question that Before has been we asked. Me, the additional yeah. question, I really want to yeah. speak to this moment because it is a very important moment for Scarborough. Um, we do have uh, many Black people who live in Scarborough and Scarborough Guildwood. It's about 14%. It's a very significant part of our population. And, you know, you asked earlier, John, about the unemployment rate in Scarborough. And before COVID, the unemployment rate for Black youth in Scarborough was 25%. So one in four Black youth in Scarborough are unemployed. It's the same for Indigenous youth as well. And so before this COVID-19 pandemic, this was a challenge and it was a problem in our community in terms of opportunities for young people. You know, at the same time, young people in Scarborough are some of the most talented and creative and imaginative uh, people needing opportunities. So this investment by the city is extremely important and it's important that it reaches Scarborough. So, you know, Mike, I'm hopeful that the great work you're doing in Little Jamaica, because it is fabulous, I, I've, I've been watching it online, 
um, that something like that happens in the East End as well, because it is very much needed. You know, let's go to pop culture. Drake, um, he loves coming to Scarborough. You know, this is where the people that like The weekend are from. His mom still lives in East Scarborough. And, and he tweeted about a small business. Um, he posted it on his Instagram called The Patty Stop. And the Patty Stop is located at 5506 Lawrence Avenue East. Um, and so if you want to taste uh, an incredible Jamaican patty, go to the Patty Stop. Um, the, where, where the intersection, Mitzi? Do you know? It's, um, I think it's close. Uh, it, it's probably uh, It'd be close. close to Kingston Road, I would think, wouldn't it? Kingston it's or further east? east, further east. Yeah, I mean, it's outside of the riding. It's, it's outside of the riding. Right. No, no, no. The best right. foods are always in Scarborough Guildwood. Yeah, but yeah I, that's right. there's also there's another one that I go to all the time. It's called Patty Times, and that's um, mm -hmm. that's just right across from the hospital, and um, on Lawrence as well. But what I'm what I'm trying to point to is is that there's so much creativity that is happening. It needs to be supported, and we have to recognize that anti-black racism um, is is real. It's systemic, and, uh, and it has created those barriers. And at this time, um, where there is an understanding of that, we have to work hard to remove those barriers. You know, in the recession of the 1990s, um, I was a student at U, U of T. And uh, and there weren't any jobs for, you know, similar to what's happening now for for young people. So I applied for a provincial government program for youth entrepreneurs, uh, wrote a business plan, and I started a company in Scarborough. And I got a five thousand um, dollar investment, really, from the province that went into helping me to start that company. And I have to say that sometimes there are people who are around us in our communities. They have the ideas, they have the energy, the work ethic. They just need that boost and that hand up. And uh, and I, I believe that we've got to make sure that we we provide those programs um, that can give people the start that they need, particularly our young entrepreneurs. Okay, we've, we've only got a few minutes left and I do want to get a couple more questions from the public in. Uh, uh, one of our more attentive members from the public has said that it's at Port Union and Lawrence. So we yes. all know where that is. Yes, okay, <laughs> but it is on the Scarborough the Rouge River. Here, here, we're, here we're promoting something outside of the riding. I don't know why that's a good that's idea. Okay. It's so this, great teamwork, great teamwork. Yeah. Team Scarborough. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Scarborough, to, uh, Scarborough to the, is the center of the universe, as we all know. For uh, this is a question for Paul and Mitzi. Given the increase in people improperly assembling during changing phases, are there plans to have a specialized task force to make sure that businesses are continuing to be safe? So um, we we haven't got very very long. So maybe uh, two minutes each from uh, Paul and Mitzi. And, uh, and uh, frankly, uh, frankly, Mike and Andrew can chime in on this so they feel so inclined. Yeah, I'll be very concise with uh, municipal licensing and uh, standard staff. They're uh, really only giving out tickets for businesses that are repeat offenders. We're uh, just trying to go in and trying to make sure that people understand the laws and the bylaws and what they should be doing and how their employees should be acting or interacting with the public. So uh, we're, that's the approach that we're taking. I think people have to remember that, you know, the virus is still spreading. And if we see a, a uptick or a, a second wave, the risk is that we could go right back where we started and we don't want that. So we've got to follow the public health guidelines and the public health rules. Um, we know that uh, Toronto is very close to moving into stage three, uh, which will mean that, you know, gatherings can take place indoors. Um, it w you know, restaurants will be uh, in room dining with very uh, strict um, physical distancing. And, um, and and we know that gatherings indoors will increase to 50 people and outdoors 100 people max. 
what we have to do is follow those guidelines and follow those rules so that we don't see um, a, a rapid circulation of the virus to the extent that it puts public health at risk and we have to um, go back to where we started. So let's continue to, to follow those rules uh, as much as possible. Uh, it, yes, we need to and, enforce and, and, the rules, but let's follow you them. Can, if, you, if you need an example of um, places going backwards, look at Florida or Texas or Arizona, yeah. where they opened up, uh, they weren't very careful to begin with, they opened up quite quickly, and then now they're paying a huge penalty. And uh, yeah. so Mitzi and Paul are, are quite right. Uh, Mike or Andrea, do you want to weigh in on that question at all? Actually, I am going to challenge Mike on the platform here right now. I think what we need to do, and, and this just came to mind, and that's how we move at SBA or task force. We move like like lightning. So, so Mike, I think on our next webinar session coming up in September, I think we will be in phase three. Let's, let's meet and talk about how can we help our businesses to follow the safety guidelines and bring back the confidence with our consumers. Because consumers will go into these shops and quickly rebuild the revenue and help the economic recovery of Scarborough. Go yes. Scarborough. What yes. do you say, Mike? I said yes. yes. Okay, yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah, I think he ducked and on we're that, Andrea. We're recording this, Mike. I totally agree with it. I said yes. Let's meet in September. I'll we'll meet in August. I'll yeah. meet in July. Yes, yes absolutely. So the, the, Thank you. The, the, the last question goes to Mitzi. Um, and then I will just ask each of you to sort of summarize in 30 seconds, uh, yes. and then we'll uh, we'll close off. So, um, Mitzi, very briefly, um, can Mitzi illuminate why uh, many uh, may feel ODSP is significantly less support than its federal counterpart? Right. So um, I think this is a very fair question. Uh, we've seen with the introduction of CERB that people who are on income supports, Ontario Works and ODSP, um, you know, there's an inadequacy there. Um, the, the province did provide uh, an emergency amount of $200. Um, and I believe for, um, uh, for, for ODSP, it was uh, $250, if I, if I remember my numbers correctly. Uh, but people had to apply for that through their caseworker, and uh, and then once they once they've done that, it was automatically renewed. But the the sad part is that it's coming to an end this month. Whereas, of course, we've already talked about the fact that CERB and other wage subsidies and interventions are continuing because the pandemic is still with us. So this is something that we have to continue to 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 you know ask the uh, provincial government to make sure that we are responding to people who are um, in the most vulnerable situations during this pandemic. You know, one of the things that um, Paul, John and I have done um, with others in Scarborough uh, is, uh, is food security. And, you know, we've gone to the CARES program that's being run at U of T, Global Medic and the City of Toronto. Um, there are other programs that are in our community as well. And that's because people don't have enough income on their own and many people are struggling. So so th it's a fair question. Um, it, it, more needs to be done in this area. And I'll continue to advocate uh, on, on behalf of um, individuals who need that type of income supports um, so that uh, they're not forgotten during this pandemic. Okay, this has been a fairly uh, lively uh, interaction. And I think it actually uh, has, um, has fulfilled the expectations that uh, Mitzi and Paul and I had. Um, and uh, I just wanted to give a, a last few seconds to Andrea and to Mike to do a, a, a bit of a, a summary, um, 30 seconds or something of that nature, and then uh, and then we'll close off because we are uh, past our our time. So um, uh, so Andrea went first and Mike went second. So let's reverse the order. Uh, Mike, uh, what are your thoughts in 30 seconds or less on? Uh, on uh, Go Team Scarborough. Uh, a few key points. First of all, John, thank you and, and Paul and Missy for inviting me and having this topic. I think it's important. Uh, two, I want to plug a program that was not ours, but both the province and feds have teamed up with uh, the Royal Bank of Canada, RBC, on Canada United, 
which is to boost local shopping uh, by using social media and then uh, pinpointing the last full weekend in August uh, the 28th, 29th, I think, uh, for Shop Local. And that's my last uh, point I wanted to make is patronize your, your local stores. They need your business. Uh, they're the heart of your community. Uh, please get out and, and patronize your local stores, in Scarborough especially. Especially in Scarborough. And we'll even take in people from North York. Just as a special <laughs> offer, yeah. Andrea, Andrea, what do you, what's your thought? Okay, so that's the challenge. I cannot speak for thirty seconds, so I'm gonna begin. Okay. <laughs> so, so, okay. so, so uh, John, um, uh, Ainsley, and Mitzi, like, thank you so much for having me on my first live uh, town hall meeting. So. You have christened me, so thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> and a um, um, couple of points. Number one, I, I, I love to challenge because that's how we get moving. And so I want to challenge all the stakeholders in Scarborough um, with Scarborough Business Association and Scroll. Our, our, our partner, and just to give a shout out to Squirrel, we, we have been merged and working on a broadband issue, um, supporting the, the internet issues that our residents and um, our our commercial businesses are experiencing in Scarborough. And so that letter is, is ready to go. We want piece of the pie of that $500 million that was announced by uh, Premier Ford. Let's not forget about our Scarborough. We want to encourage businesses to come into Scarborough and not have to pay extra to run cables, special cables uh, to run their business. And now we have um, uh, all of the technology that we need the businesses to do to move on in phase three. And if we're having internet, internet issues, we are from ground zero with challenges. So that's another topic for another day. Gonna leave it there. Um, I just want to say thank you to the community for always supporting our Scarborough Business Association. We are a very strong community. As, as I said, I want to meet at a round table. Here's the name of the round table. Economic Task Force Round Table for Scarborough. Let's make Scarborough that unique place where everybody can come together and we can be stronger together. We need it now more than ever. And so please visit our SBA website. We now start the vlog program where businesses are uh, sharing their challenges through COVID-19 and how they got out of the challenge and their reopening success. So I thank you. Thank you, uh, Andrea. You're right about the 30 second thing, but I don't think you're <laughs> unique or alone in, the, in trying to summarize things in 30 seconds. But yes. um, we, uh, we have uh, kind of blown through our time here, so I'm not gonna, challenge either Mitzi or Paul with uh, trying to summarize in 30 seconds, but I'm just going to- I can to do it in 15. <laughs> oh, well, then then Mitzi will do it. Yeah, yeah. No, I'll, uh, if you're really desperate, I'll, I'm, because I'm such a nice chair, I'll let you go with 15 seconds, but then I'm going to put you on mute. So, Paul, you want to do 15 seconds or no? Sure. I just want to okay. thank Andrea for all your hard work and dedication with the Scarborough Business Association. Michael, for all your leadership with economic development of the City of Toronto, my provincial and federal colleagues, Mitzi Hunter and John McKay, and everybody stay safe and well and follow the rules. Thank you. And I just hey, Mitzi, the, Mitzi, the rule is 15 seconds. Yes, I just want to say <laughs> a huge thank you to Andrea for your leadership at the Scarborough Business Association. Keep doing what you're doing. It's wonderful and, and you're really an example um, of, of turning um, this very challenging situation into an opportunity for the association. Yes. And, and Mike, um, I, I just think that you're you're so strong in terms of your understanding of the fundamentals of the business community, and we want all of that talent and focus on Scarborough. So that's that's our, our pitch to you. Yes. And and, uh, and thank right. you so much, uh, John. You are a wonderful host. Um, you made this hour fly by. It was so yes, yes. And yes. Uh, and Paul, thank you so much. I think uh, I think you promised us an LRT. That's our story and we're sticking to yeah, it. Yeah, we're sticking. And, that's right, um, that's right. 
And I just yeah. want to thank uh, all of uh, all of those dedicated people who watch um, our virtual town hall. Uh, this is, uh, I believe, our fourth one. And thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we will continue to do this forum and make information available to you and stay yeah. as close as we possibly can. Stay safe and have a great rest of your summer. Have, have you ever noticed that politicians have run on sentences? And that they have conjunctive, and it's conjunctive sentences. So there's about 15 ands in the middle of one sentence. Uh, so I'm, I'm really pleased that I gave uh, everybody 15 seconds. Yeah. Um, with that, <laughs> thank you. This has been quite lively, lots of fun. Um, uh, our special guests have been Andrea Hazel and Mike Williams. Um, we appreciate your knowledge and your willingness to, uh, to interact with us. Um, and um, I, uh, I consider this uh, to be one of our more successful efforts to uh, reach out. And um, stay tuned because we're going to do it again. Don't know uh, just exactly when and don't know exactly what, but we are going to do this again. I think our so, next one is you. education. Is it education? It's okay, education. well, you have to educate the MDs. <laughs> okay, there we are. Okay. Okay, take care, everyone. Stay safe. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.